This is my favorite episode out of all the episodes. I always like the ones that involved a lot of color and creation and imaginative design like the vegetables. Here's the first we see of Gilligan having a fast leg from this shot immediately to this shot. I don't know how Gilligan managed to float over dry land, but notice where Gilligan is standing here in relation to this old hunk of tree stump. And here notice the background where he's standing. And again, the background is the same where he is standing. And voila, look where he is now next to the tree stump. And I do see something lying down here near this tree stump, but I don't see it enough or again to determine what it is. Notice in this close-up view, each of the boxes of seeds has a little identification picture on it. And these are more than likely actual little packets of seeds that you use to buy for your garden. And they put one on the top of each box. But in the longer shot, when Gilligan's looking into the top, these aren't on those boxes. They're just plain cardboard, and you can even tell when he pulls one out. These boxes must also contain radioactive, magically appearing ink. If you look at the blank flap on this box here, and then immediately it has printing. I wanted to go over these seed packets because I think they're cool. I was able to find dozens and dozens of seed packets, old and new, but I could never find any packet exactly like any of these shown in this crate. The reasons I think they are authentic is because they all have the large bold print and smaller print underneath, which is the name of the vegetable and then the variety under it. Plus, they all say 25 cents, which would be an odd thing to put on there for a prop. And also, they all have this red sticker, which I'm wondering if it was used to cover over a brand name logo. On the other hand, most studios did have a print shop, so they could have cut the pictures out of a catalog or something. The other reasons I think they are not authentic is because you would never find mushroom seeds or truffle seeds, or at least packaged like this for a garden. Be that as it may, the vegetable seeds that we do see in this crate so far are six types of squash. Two of them appear to be acorn squash. One of them is a squash assortment, but they're probably really gourds, although you don't eat gourds. This one here is called a white scallop or white bush squash. Down here are more than likely zucchini, and over here is probably a large kind of zucchini, although it does look like a watermelon. But Marianne does refer to this package later as squash. And up here we do have beets, however make note that these are not sugar beets, they are two entirely different animals. Sugar beets are huge and very pulpy and you would never be able to eat them. Regular beets like this are edible, but they wouldn't provide the sugar and energy as indicated in the storyline. Then we have cucumbers. And here we have the truffles. Here is red leaf lettuce, then the mushrooms, regular leaf lettuce, Swiss chard, which is mentioned by Marianne later, spinach, radishes, and over here we have carrots. And giving them the benefit of the doubt and thinking there is probably two layers of boxes in this crate, vegetables that are mentioned later that are not seen here include corn, artichoke, potatoes, and beans. The skipper seems to have lost his plow handles here in this scene compared to the next where he has immediately moved his hands up to Gilligan's reins. Here we have a time reference shot where morning is breaking on the island and all is well until you look in the bottom right hand corner and see this thing that looks like a shark's fin. This is a World War II tank trap. They were placed on shore or just offshore to keep enemy tanks from coming up on land. They came in a few varieties. They were dragon's teeth and hedgehog tank traps. This is a dragon's teeth type. Some of them were solid concrete. And when you think that it would have only been 20 years previous to the making of Gilligan's Island that the war had ended, it's not at all unusual for many World War II artifacts to still be lingering around in different parts of the island and the rest of the world. So obviously this is a stock shot that caught one of these in the water, or it could be that they were placed around Gilligan's Island. And then if you look at this palm tree to the left, you can see this object here. It is either a board nailed to the other side of the tree or something like a raft out in the water. Judging from the clarity on the left here on the edge of this object, I would say it is probably something nailed on the other side of the tree. 
I always thought of this as kind of an odd directing issue. As Marianne and the professor are excited about the spinach plants coming up, Mary Ann says, well, what about the carrots? Like spinach plants. Well, the carrots, are they coming up too? Are they? Look! Oh! And yet they're only a foot behind her and she certainly knew where they were planted. Then she turns around and looking immediately behind her, acts like she's surprised. I compare this shot with Mary Ann and the professor in the garden to the one a little later on with Mr. and Mrs. Howell, and we've had a major crop shift. As you can see, the row that the professor says is spinach has now become mushrooms. You can tell because it's still lying near these wads of grass. Notice that these two vegetables on either side of the carrots have totally swapped positions, and I can't find where the spinach ended up at all. Since we all seem to have our favorite vegetables, let's move them near us. I was looking at this new object here behind the professor. In a later shot, here's a much better picture of it. I'm wondering if it's some kind of a washing trough because there's a towel hanging over it. Or it could be a coffin anticipating that the seeds were radioactive take a look at this pull out zoom shot you can see the cracks in the floorboards of the stage where they didn't cover them up with enough sand here we have a fast book from a more reclined position back straight up in front of the professor this one I do credit to David Calderola but I differ with him a little bit what the professor is actually reading as opposed to a remedy to their seed problem is a TM series technical manual for military equipment. David also pointed out that you can see this manual is for a light tank. You can see the L and the NK. There were several manuals for light tanks. David mentioned he thought it was a 9-720. However, the 720 is an operator's manual for a three-quarter ton 4x4 Dodge truck gun motor carriage. The number could also be a 728 or a 729. I find no reference at all to a 728 for anything, but a 729 is for a light tank. So you can make up your own mind on that. Here the skipper and Marianne are doing their walking at the lagoon, as is obvious. And we all know what the lagoon looks like here. And yet when they look out to see the boat, we see this big open ocean view. When Gilligan tosses this coconut toward the skipper, on the hut wall you can see the grass shimmy a little bit before the coconut hits. You can see a glistening string or line, which is the line that the coconut travels on. You can see the coconut near this line as it heads toward the hut, and you can see it sway down as the coconut goes by. Here there are four cables hooked onto the four corners of this lounge that the skipper is on. They did a good job of keeping the background dark so that you couldn't see them as Gilligan lifts him up and down. However, here in this close-up, you can see one of them pretty well. This whole bubble blowing scene is very clever and pretty funny. They did have trouble though lining up the hoses with the bubbles. In most of the cases, the hoses are above or below the castaways' mouths. And you can see here that both Gilligan and the skipper's bubbles tend to be a little high. And also in this shot, we can clearly see the hose behind Gilligan and it even moves a little bit when he moves. Marianne's bubbles are way high and coming out of her cheek. Ginger's are coming out of her chin. And Mr. Howells are pretty funny coming out in globs. Here the professor does a really quick job of ditching this Geiger counter and then immediately he's holding a piece of soap. And this was a nice touch doing the Lawrence Welk music with the bubbles. I really love this bubble. They did a good job on this, and my guess is they used something similar to super elastic bubble plastic, if any of you remember that being available as a toy. It was out in the 60s and 70s. 